hello. Uh, I'm a software engineer in Pinterest, and uh, I and Lena we are working on the data org. Uh, we uh, adopt a data hub project in Pinterest for half an year, and uh, my team, uh, big data query platform, is responsible for the backend, while Lena's team, uh, application um, platform, is work is responsible for front end. Today we are going to present together for for how does Data Hub project uh, uh, works in Pinterest, and uh, mo I will present most. And if you have some front end or UI questions, uh, feel free to ask Lena. Okay, so so we we have several con uh, content. First, I will overview it, and second, I will talk about three. Swift repo ingestion and data element. Uh, then we will talk about the future. So <clears throat> I'm in the big query platform team in Pinterest. I'm maintaining uh, the query engines uh, for for internal users to use to do offline analysis. So uh, two engines we are maintaining, which is Presto and Spark. And uh, we uh, for the for the table schema, we we use high meta store. As well as the Swift REPL, so every every day Swift REPL will be compiled to JAR and feed into the Presto and Spark, so that we can understand the the data schema. Uh, however, this is not convenient, and uh, and we don't we can't add any metadata on these schemas. So we uh, so we think, what about can we can we adopt a schema? Um, metadata management tool to Pinterest so that our user can easily navigate the tables and the script schema to understand what's the semantic meaning of the columns, what's the table tier, what the table retention, such metadata. Then after investigating uh, a bunch of, uh, then, then, oh, okay, so, so first I will talk, so, talk about some numbers. We have 250K hype tables and 100k thrift struct and enums. So the, the main point, the main pain point is for the data consumer, people don't know which table should be used and what the column mean. And for the data producer, they, they, need, a govern, they need a governance tool. They need to add some uh, metadata, but they don't know where to add. And we compare this open source project like open meta, uh, and uh, finally, we we compare some uh, consider the storage, web UI, access control, and so on. Finally, we find the data hub best fit our requirement, so we adopt that. Um, then, <clears throat> uh, then there are some gaps between data hub and our requirement. First is uh, Swift ingestion. Looks like uh, we don't have Swift ingestion in data hub, although we have proto buff, but, uh, uh, but Swift is a different thing. Uh, so we spend some time to add a Swift ingestion there. And uh, secondly is we want to add a very complicated column level uh, metadata called data element. Uh, I will introduce these two things in, in the following. So first is Swift ingestion. We want to ingest the Swift REPL, which is a code, into a data hub service. So it looks like this. There is a Swift file called struct, blah, blah, blah. And it has two columns. And uh, after ingestion, we will see the UI. Hey, this is a Swift, uh, um, uh, Swift struct name, and uh, these are the fields of the Swift. This is the outcome. For people who, who don't know the Swift, is Swift is like a proto buff. It's just a, a schema, uh, a hard code schema in uh, in a file, and uh, it can represent any uh, data structures, and it can be compiled to, into any different languages and do the serialization, deserialization, and so forth. So here are some Swift example. We have a uh, we have Swift enum, for example. We have a full A B C D. We have struct full, uh, have three columns in the struct, and we have some union for for uh, for 
two different struct. And uh, also we support the, um, uh, sorry, what, what is name? Annotation. We, we support annotation for a, a column level. For example, this is a struct full. It has one column and no link is a annotation. And also we support the uh, struct level annotation. For example, this struct full has a Python immutable annotation. So we we then we consider uh, can we ingest the, the script into the uh, into the data hub? We talk about two, we think thought about two approaches. One is directly from the Swift source file, and another is from generated artifacts. If we generate from artifacts, it will be very similar, like uh, current uh, protobuf ingestion. Uh, but uh, it has this advantage because some information is being lost, uh, for example, Python name, namespace and line number. And those annotation uh, or other additional information uh, is very important to us. So we decided to go from the source file. Then, thanks to Data Hub's extensibility, we could uh, easily build our Swift model. So, uh, this is uh, the green uh, entity or stack means the existing from the Data Hub, and the blue one are additional one. So, we just add another pro platform schema called Swift schema, and this Swift schema has everything I want to ingest. <clears throat> and uh, the ingestion flow is we, we will read the script file and the first we get the header and header means the namespace and in namespace table uh, struct name and so forth. Second, we use uh, this, this uh, result to run a, a visitor called get a declaration visitor and we get a name resolver. Finally, we get the, we use a, we, we write a binder and use the name resolver to get MCPs to ingest to data hub. This is too technical detail. Uh, we uh, we haven't uh, uh, like contribute the Swift back into the data hub, but uh, it's all it's on our pl uh, plan. Here's is uh, what it look like for the Swift UI. So this is a table. Table. This table. This column use a list of attribute attributed action, attributed action is a Swift struct. And uh, you can click this attributed action and it will navigate to a Swift struct. It has bunch of field in the Swift and you can further click uh, this uh, this blue one and uh, go into to see the detail. So this give uh, our customer a very convenient way to, to explore what uh, was a very nasty structure like so and uh, it's very concise uh, in the in the first uh, in the root level ui so you can only see the contributor action and then you can navigate if you want okay this is for the swift ui and the second thing i want to introduce is a data element data element in pinterest is another uh we, we can think of this is another typing system so um, so this uh, data element means a logical construct that describes business entity and it describes a table column. For example, we have a data hub type number, and uh, number is not enough to uh, to describe this column precisely. But but if we use impression type, then we can describe it precisely. Then when you see impression in different tables, you will uh, you will make uh, very sure that uh, this Two, dif uh, two different uh, impression are the same thing, although their column name uh, can be different. So the first first uh, time we we reuse a glossary term, then we we realize the glossary term does not meet our needs because we want some composition of the um, of the data element. For example, do we support anonymous list of impression, or we we don't support anonymous. We every time when we want to compose it, we have to create another a new data element called the impression list. Uh, then we decide to support the anonymous uh, list of impression. Then 
user don't have to register list of impression, list of list of impression, map user ID impression. They don't have to give them a name. They can just composite existing one. So also thanks to Data Hub extendability, we, we extend the Data Hub model to support our data element. The, it, this is very simple, just to add a new uh, field in the editable schema, met, uh, schema field info. Then we have the data element. This data element is something called data element ref. And uh, this, this data element ref will point to a data, data element def. So very complicated, but very easy to implement due to the extendability. Uh, and uh, here's what the data element looks like. So we have a table. We, have a, we can see the data element of this field, for example, pin ID. And if we click in, click into the pin ID, and uh, we we go to the data element uh, detail page, then we can also navigate uh, the related entities, and we see oh this pin ID, this pin ID is used in this table, in this table, in this table. So you can build the uh, comparison, or you can build the um, joint pr prediction of uh, a predicate. You can build a join predicate very easily because they are the same thing. Uh, that's the power of data elements. Uh, okay, then we will talk about some future. In the future, we will keep using data data hub, and our focus is something like a validation. Can we validate something before we save the data? This is one thing. Second thing is a version aspect. Uh, I know that uh, currently we support a version of data set. But we also need some version data element and so on. Can we build a unified, uh, like uh, an unified way to 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 make a stack uh, versioned and we can access from GQ, uh, GraphQL API? And third one I want to mention is we we see some five hundred er code error, uh, five hundred server error. That's because our data does not compatible to our model because we introduce the uh, non backward compatible change and uh, this makes our um, development very hard because we want to introduce a compatible backward compatible model and uh, have the data and uh, mutate the data and uh, change the model back this is very complicated can we make this easier so that we can easily extend the model um, without considering too much about compatibility backward compatibility okay that's much about it